Hello and welcome back. The three concerns of macroeconomics are output growth, price stability, and low unemployment. They are influenced by events in three broadly defined markets. In this video, we will start to examine the market for goods and services, more precisely, the consumption function. First, I want to remind you with some terms, like aggregate output, which is the total quantity of goods and services produced in an economy in a given period. And aggregate income is the total income received by all factors of production in a given period. We have to know that aggregate output is equal to aggregate income. Why? Because all my production, its objective is to get the income. So this is why we're having the term aggregate output income, Y, which is a combined term used to remind you of the exact equality between aggregate output and aggregate income. The consumption function or Keynesian consumption function is an economic formula that represents the functional relationship between total consumption and gross national income. It was introduced by British economist John Maynard Keynes, who argued the function could be used to track and predict total aggregate consumption. A consumption for an individual household shows the level of consumption at each level of household income. Now you have to keep in mind that various fa factors other than income influence consumption, such as wealth, future expectations, interest rates, preferences, and so on. But for simplicity, it's assumed to depend only on income. Now with a straight line curve, we can use the following equation to describe this curve. C, which is the consumption equal A plus BY. With A, it's the Y-intercept or the intersection between the consumption line and the Y-intercept. And B, it's the slope. The aggregate consumption function shows the level of aggregate consumption at each level of aggregate income. As you can see, the upward slope indicates that higher levels of income lead to higher levels of consumption spending. Now we will see MPC and MPS, and we will know what are they. First, our income or the output income Y, we have two options to do with it. The first one, we can consume or we can save. This is why y, y equals C plus S. It means the output income is equal to the consumption plus saving. This equation, it could be written in a different way, such as S equal y minus c or c equal y minus s and as you can see it's identity it means something that it's always true you can see it from the equality where we're having the three red horizontal lines now marginal propensity to consume mpc it's that fraction of a change in income that is consumed or spent it's the slope of the consumption function, delta C over delta Y. For instance, if my income increased by $100 and my consumption increased by $80, it means MPC is equal 80 over 100, it's 0 0.8. Now the marginal propensity to save MPS is that fraction of a change in income that is saved. It's the slope of the saving function, delta S over delta Y. 
If we have the same example, if we consumed 80, it means we saved 20. So the marginal propensity to save MPS in this case, it's 20 over 100, it's 0 0.2. If we add 0 0.2 to 0 0.8, we will have one. And we know that MPC plus MPS, it's always equal one, because we have only two options to do with our output income, or to save, or to consume. So this is why MPC plus MPS, it's equal one. In order to better understand the consumption function, we have a numerical example here. In this simple consumption function, consumption is 100 at income of zero. And consumption is 400 at an income of 400. So we, as you can see, as income rises, so does consumption. Now, the formula for this, equ uh, the equation for this line, it's C equal A plus BY. If you want, you can take a few seconds and pause the video in order to figure out what's A and what's B and how we can calculate them. So as we said previously, A, it's the y-intercept and it's the intersection between the consumption line and the y-axis. So here, A equals 100. And B, it's the slope. It's the rise over run. It means it's delta C over delta Y. It's 75 over 100. So in this case, it's 0 0.75. So the consumption fun equation for this line, it's C equal 100 plus 0 0.75 Y. So for every increase in 100 in the output income, the consumption will increase by 75 which is 0 0.75 times 100. Now, because S equal Y minus C, it's easy to derive the saving function from the consumption function. The 45 degrees line drawn from the origin can be used as a convenient tool to compare consumption and income graphically. In fact, it represents the set of points where the aggregate consumption in the economy is equal to, act to output or national income. So whenever the consumption line is above the 45 degrees line, it means the consumption is greater than the output income. You can consider that point where Y equal 200 the consumption is equal to 150. It means the saving is minus 50 because it's 200 minus 250. And whenever the blue line or the consumption line it's below the 45 degrees line, it means the income is greater than the consumption. You can consider point where the income is 800, the consumption is 700. It means the saving is 100, which is 800 minus 700. Now, the intersection between the line, the blue line, and the 45 degrees line, it's where we're having equality and where we're having y equals c, and here at a point of 400. Now, if you want, you can try to figure out how we can derive the saving function from the consumption function. Also, you can pause the video and try it by yourself. So in order to derive the saving function, we start from S equal Y minus C, and we replace C by its equation. So S equal Y minus 100 plus 0 0.75 Y, which is the consumption function. So it will lead us to the saving function, which is S equal minus 100 
plus 0.25y. And also, if we want uh, to do it in a different way, we can take two points for the saving, and we can have the equation of the line. Finally, we will see the planned investment. In general, planned investment is the amount of investment firms plan to undertake during a year. Actual investment is the amount of investment actually undertaken during a year. So if actual investment is greater than planned investment, then inventories go up. Since inventories are part of capital, this increase in inventories may lead firms to reduce output. For now, we will assume that planned investment is fixed. So it does not change when income changes. So its graph is a horizontal line. Unlike consumption, investment depends more on interest rates and on business expectations than on level of income. So in this video, we learn about consumption function and planned investment. In future video, we will see the role of the government and how it will affect the goods and services market. And later, how we can reach the equilibrium on this market. Thank you for watching this video. If you like it, give it a thumbs up and stay tuned for future videos.